The people voteth, the panda maketh. Let's do this. <laughs> So, fun fact, the executive producer of this episode is Steven Hillenburg. Wow. Well, now that I can hear the glorious main cast in English, let's actually see what this episode is about. We start off with Mr. Krabs speaking positively about Mrs. Puff and Pearl, and by that I mean he's happy that his daughter and romantic partner are giving him more money, because at this point, the line between his love for all three is so blurred, you can make a convincing argument for all three. Outside of class, we don't know each other. Oh yeah! Well, here's your Krabby Patty, mysterious lady. <laughs> Imagine the pain you'd feel with a sesame seed in your eye. Of all of the ways that Spongebob has creatively served Krabby Patties to customers, this one just leaves me with more questions than an appetite. Like I said within the original video, there are a lot of dynamics here that aren't as tested, and I would have loved to see a lot of these pairings. Pearl and Mrs. Puff, Spongebob, Mrs. Puff and Pearl, Krabs and Pearl and Mrs. Puff, even Squidward and Patrick without Spongebob. There's been a few episodes, sure, but they generally revolve around the sponge. You know what else? could be fun, Plankton, Mrs. Puff, and Mr. Krabs. Now there's a dynamic I'd like to see more of. The health inspector from Nasty Patty makes another appearance saying that someone within the Krusty Krab is infected with clam flu, and shuts them down, placing them under quarantine. And I've been thinking a lot about that word, quarantine. You've heard it in the media so much that it has an even more negative feeling attached to it than it normally would. And I'm not saying that this episode would have aired if it didn't have that wording, but it would have made this easier to premiere if you wanted to do it under the radar or if you wanted to put it on the DVD but you know not announce it. I also just love the sequence of having his foot in a cartoonish manner kick open the door leading into Spongebob's eyes popping back into his face and Mr. Krabs gasping in a girly way. What's a, a quarantine? A quarantine is like a mandatory sleepover oh. and we're all invited. Oh, that doesn't necessarily age the greatest. But they all panic in their unique way, Pearl crying, Mrs. Puff puffing up, Patrick following along because other people were doing it, but not grasping the severity of the situation. It's through here where we set up the premise that this group of folk will be locked overnight with the alleged clam flu virus. Also, isn't it convenient that no one else was in the Krusty Krab? What a good time to have absolutely no strangers in your restaurant. I mean, I wish they gave us a sentence or two about the clam flu. Is it deadly? Does it spread fast? Is it actually itchy? Does it even come from actual clams? Well, none of these questions, and even less, will be answered, as this crew accepts that this is their home away from home, involuntarily. Well, except one. Plankton would use this opportunity to leave and then get cleansed by the flames of oh my god, they actually killed him. I don't care that this is a cartoon, he's dead. I know he comes back later in the episode, but it's better to believe that he ascended to the next level, if you catch my drift. Now that the premise is here, let's start Fungus Among Us. So you're probably thinking, why Fungus Among Us? Well, it's about a fungus that goes around infecting others. There's a lot of panic, there's a lot of themes that the other episode did, just more graphic, that seems to be allowed to air still. Or at least what I thought, but more on that later. We start off with Gary having no food and thus makes the next logical step. He checks to see if Spongebob can be woken up with the simple phrase before getting on top of him and eating him instead. I'm sure Gary could survive off of Sponge for a good week before help arrives. His plan goes awry when Spongebob wakes up and thus Spongebob feeds him organic food, food that pets hate. I realize you're a bottom feeder, but have some manners. Here we see the invincible green goo. Do you know how I got here? Do you know how to get rid of it? It doesn't matter. What does matter is that this fungus gets on SpongeBob, and now he's infected. Gary makes offhand comments, and I'd like to assume that he was plotting to eat SpongeBob when he was asleep, or maybe that he's plotting to do it later tonight. Until then, we get Patrick knocking on the door. I also like how this is season five, Patrick, so he's not completely brain dead yet. I can totally see season 12, Patrick, assuming that it's hat, or better yet, food, and just eating it straight off of SpongeBob's head because comedy. 
On a more serious note, them treating this seriously is exactly what this is needed if you want to instill that panic sort of vibe. But you know, not go 100%. You want to ease that anxiety and tension within the episode gradually. Going from a small, it's not that big a deal sort of energy into full blown chaos. The team definitely knew what they were doing here. They try scratching it, it grows bigger. They try pimple cream. It makes SpongeBob look like an idiot. However, nothing confuses me more than Patrick. See, Patrick? Sure do. Well, I'm gonna go sit in my hole. Catch you later, pal. Bye, Patrick. Did he come over just to tell SpongeBob that he was going to sit in his hole? Anyway, classic setup, nonetheless. SpongeBob learns to live with it, seeing that it's not going to be that bad or it may go away on its own, and goes about his normal day, showering, having breakfast, and later going on to work. However, we'd learned that it isn't as simple as hiding it, as it's apparently itchy and sizzling? They definitely threw a hamburger sound in there. I guess SpongeBob is low-key preparing himself with all the spices and ingredients that Gary will feast on later. The episode then continues cranking the knob of tension. I mean, it's just a really fun story-based episode. There isn't a lot of jokes within the beginning, and that's okay. It actually reminds me of episodes like Hookie or Karate Choppers, where the gradual increase in an activity they either shouldn't be doing or doing in moderation gets to a point where it can't be stopped. But it's for the most part a story-based, calmer episode than some of its hyperactive counterparts. It's also just a nice premise, given that the ick can infect fish. That's a real thing that aquatic life goes through. And while it doesn't feel as nautical as pre-movie, and it has like a sitcom-y feel, in my opinion, I do appreciate how this premise retains that underwater adventure aesthetic that I love about a lot of pre-movie episodes at the time. You probably couldn't do this concept with other shows that were out around the time, which was one of the reasons why SpongeBob is and was so special. And speaking Speaking of, Spongebob tries to avoid the problem even more, but it gets to a point where it's unbearable. Well, we'll see how the public responds after we get back over to Quarantine Crab. The team grasps the weight of this situation having expressions of fear, repressed frustration, and more importantly, sadness. But I have to cheer at the big game tomorrow! Everyone's gonna laugh at me if I get sick and die first! Aw, you have friends that would laugh at you for being sick and dead? Lucky, I don't have that at all. However, we get possibly my favorite story from Mr. Krabs. He explains the story of how his crewmates and him handled the idea of a quarantine. Anyone who showed symptoms of the illness that they were trying to avoid, they throw that person into the freezer and continue to enjoy life. Once another person started to show symptoms, they'd repeat. However, he never explains that once they reached land or a place with medical care that they'd let those people out, instead opting to say, Huh? I suppose someone let him out. Which means that Krabs could definitely have blood on his hands, and that's my personal theory. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that it seems to be canon. His entire history of being within the Navy is interesting, and that would make for a great episode. I know we have at least one or two, but that's a subject that I would love to see explored a lot more. So Mr. Krabs asks the logical question, who is sick? And obviously no one responds because the thing is, no one is really sick. Everyone is going off of what the health inspector said, but I'm sure everyone feels fine. I'm sure sicknesses don't have to be felt to be present, of course, but we're going off of one guy with one device that he used for five seconds. Not exactly cemented in fact. Squidward gets even more paranoid, causing a pepper shaker to be lodged into Spongebob's nose, causing him to sneeze. And what do many sick people do? Sneeze. So of course, fueled off of anxiety, they all assume it was Spongebob with the clam flu. And like I said in my original video, I guess we're all ignoring the fact that a whole pepper shaker went into the sky and into his nose. He decides to go willingly, even repeating the same sentiment that I did. He seems perfectly fine, but I do love the joke of him allegedly infecting Squidward unintentionally. There's also a neat joke where Spongebob gives a speech about if he doesn't come back, remember him for his highlights and Mr. Krabs just slams the door in his face. Priceless. No! It sounds like he's really suffering in there. Ow! I can't bear to look. Can someone describe it to me? Now I understand that he's crashed your car multiple times, and I understand that he's failed you multiple times. I even understand that he's put you in jail and prison, and even broken you out of jail and or prison. 
However, ever since Demolition Doofus, it feels like Mrs. Puff legit won SpongeBob injured, at the very least. And I think it's dead. And that's savage. I also want to note that choosing the freezer is not only natural because it's a spot that you would regularly see throughout the years of being within the Krusty Krab, but it just makes sense as a room that's generally not lockable from the inside, although I'm pretty sure there's fail saves. But let's not pretend that there is here because it's a cartoon. Of course, they're not going to show SpongeBob dying of hypothermia, but put a pin in things within this episode that mentally scar you for later. He's actually skiing and having ice cream, something that Patrick envies enough to fake having clam flu for. Good thing he knew the symptoms, although you can make the argument that they would have locked him up for any reason. It's here where you see that the gradual increase in anxiety leads into a decrease in rational thought, as no one wants to be sick, but since no one is truly sick, the idea of finding someone who has a clam flu would be actually impossible. No one is showing the symptoms, so you're left with a bunch of healthy people picking at the tiniest things to keep them from being sick, and while you probably couldn't air this today, I do see the intended humor in that. Yeah, we'll just have to be more vigilant now. Anyone could be a carrier. Itchy skin! He's got clam flu! What? No, no, I was just scratching. <laughs> Freezer! <laughs> Besides the fact that it's funny to see Mr. Krabs use a boot to kick Mr. Squidward into the quarantine area, I love that Squidward's voice is so soft-spoken when we bring this up. The wiki brings up that Squidward would refer to himself as Mr. Tentacles, but Mr. Krabs has called him Mr. Squidward often, so I don't agree that that's an error. It sounds way more natural than Mr. Tentacles. The less we say that word on TV, the better. Of course Mr. Krabs would throw Mrs. Puff and Pearl within the quarantine area. However, Pearl is the weirdest. She was thrown in because she didn't spend all of Mr. Krabs' money? Look, I get it, he's expecting for her to spend all of his money, but he should be happy that she didn't. Like, this is Mr. Krabs we're talking about. I guess the whole sentiment of will of a birthday is partially retconned. I get that it's about the fact that it's unnatural for Pearl, I really do, but it doesn't put him in the best light. Now that everyone's locked away, let's get back to Fungus Among Us. Getting back to Fungus Among Us, SpongeBob is confronted by Squidward who immediately questions why he looks different. It's amazing how Patrick could immediately see that there was a problem with Spongebob, but Squidward can't recognize it, even though said ick is spreading to numerous parts of his body. I guess assuming their logic here is that Squidward doesn't like to remember Spongebob or even how he looks beyond the bare minimum, which is why he didn't notice it earlier, but I'm not buying that. Your skin, Spongebob! What's wrong with your skin? Oh, Dad! It's nothing really, Squidward. Just a little blemish, that's all. <laughs> Oh no, his nose is unnaturally green. Something must be wrong with him. That's the only thing that's different about his body apparently to Squidward. Either that or he has a lower viewing distance than the actual Among Us. Squidward calls the correct people to deal with the national threat of disorder. The SWAT team. I guess the Navy was still taken over by those darn robots. I love the comical exaggeration of having such an over the top response to said problem. One of the SWAT members says this is the most severe case of ick yet, then proceeds to grab it. What did he expect to do? Was he going to remove it and thus infect himself? Never have I wanted to punch a fish's face before for being so stupid. The hazmat dude treats Spongebob the way I would if this were season 6. Carry it away for no one to deal with. However, in a matter of luck, underwater physics, and plot convenience, Squidward is now infected with the ick. If only he had a small hitbox, bless his soul. Oh, please. I have no soul. <laughs> Squidward would go on to work normally, not even realizing it, and a good, good, good pick having Old Man Jenkins being the customer. He's naturally just a character that I want to see, and I can imagine him not recognizing the ick because he's so old, but he's also just an iconic character. Like I said, we really don't get enough of him. And yes, I mean this Old Man Jenkins, although the other forms are just as legendary. Like the one with the jalopy. It's Old Man Jenkins in his jalopy. <laughs> Mrs. K. That car must have been surviving off of hope and prune juice. He's such a legend. He's like Frieza, where every new form changes his body significantly. But anyway, back to the episode. Squidward would be anxious, calling himself Mr. Squidward, as we all should, and we'd get the quarantine scene. This scene will now always be looked at differently given the year 2020. Isn't it amazing to now have two different perspectives of this scene? Well, this is a good time to speak about it as any. So as I was saying before about this episode, 
episode airing, apparently they don't air this episode anymore. The last time supposedly is April 6th, although the source isn't as strong as I'd like to lean on. I'd like official confirmation or at least to look at other schedules and see that there hasn't been a schedule that has Fungus Among Us. So I'm not going to say that this is 100% true, but there doesn't really seem to be any sources out there that outright prove that this is false. They aren't airing this episode, even though this is 100% more graphic, but it's still available for purchase. Strangely, this isn't available on Fubo or YouTube TV, but this is available for purchase within YouTube and the Google Store. And it's also available to stream on CBS All Access. So while yes, this was removed from the internet TV platforms, this is still available to watch and not scrubbed off the internet the way that Quarantine Crab is at this time. It's quite rare to see Spongebob so vulnerable, even though the design of his character is better than other times when Spongebob was not at 100%. They play up this scene with strange scientists wearing masks and treating Spongebob well, but not telling him a lot of information. Gary is even locked away, and you can grasp the severity of the situation. Time will tell if Spongebob will get better, but oh well, who cares? Let's just leave this infected person alone with no food and get some ourselves. I was thinking maybe that newfangled Grubhub app. <laughs> Patrick would enter even though he fundamentally doesn't understand what a bubble is, which makes it four times where a character in this episode was put in a position to blatantly not understand something that they should understand, and you know what, I'll let it pass, because when Spongebob and Patrick would play, that game that they play causes the bubble to pop. So at least it was a group effort, and not just one character being ignorant for the sake of adding an undeserved tension towards the story. The fate of the game bottom rests in your hands. Patrick, you're a genius! And this one's mobile! He knows enough about Bubbles to help him out, but not enough about Bubbles just a minute ago to bump into repeatedly? 10 out of 10 storytelling. Would buy it again. He plans to go back to work even though I don't get that logic. Has he ever seen a bubble pop? It doesn't take that much effort. Well, we'll see how he fares after we finish up Quarantine Crab. Finishing up Quarantine Crab, they learn through this oddly Christmas themed segment that none of them are sick and that they all felt fine this whole time. Was this supposed to air around December or is the Christmas theming just go hand in hand with the snow. Either way, it's odd feeling. Yes, let's compliment the holiday season with an episode in which you're locked together with people that you know out of fear that one of them is sick and may infect you with others. Yes, that gives me such a homey feel. This is the exact episode I want to play after I listen to the Migos read me Twas the Night Before Christmas. Even without the pandemic, that is just odd fitting. I say we bust out of here, grab crabs, and lock him away. I don't know. But Mr. Krabs didn't tell us to question his orders. You can't cook Krabby Patties if you're locked in the freezer. All right, let's put this crab on ice. Imagine what this scene would have been if SpongeBob was allowed to say what he really meant. You can't cook Krabby Patties if you're locked in the freezer. This is the only, you know, if it wasn't for the Christmas shit, <laughs> I wouldn't. Fucking work. They bust out of the igloo, angry, looking for one supposedly sick Mr. Krabs. Patrick lunges forward, only to see that Mr. Krabs finally invested in an elastic shell. It's a nice chase scene here where everyone gets to participate and give their part. I particularly found it funny when Patrick would use Squidward to get into the grease trap only for SpongeBob to point out an easier route. This is where the new episodes tend to shine because this new wacky expression filled style works very well when attention is high. And there's a lot of movements to keep things quick, bouncy, and more importantly, cartoony. There are some head scratchers, like if the idea is that you shouldn't touch someone who is infected, Mr. Krabs would go on to grab Patrick's tongue that you would expect to be infected. Not only that, but he would do... uh, whatever all of this is too. You see, the general idea is that none of them are infected, but rather given misinformation by the health inspector. However, it's far too late. Funny story, um, I was holding my equipment upside down yesterday. <laughs> Nobody was actually sick! <laughs> oh, what a goof. Yes, because people make antennas upside down. Someone take away this man's badge. However, remember what I said about the whole mentally scarring part? I still retain that to this day. These following scenes where they show the crew looking actually sick and hurt are just polished up creepy pasta stories. They look really effective in being creepy and these fit right alongside the whole band Nickelodeon episode that airs 4 a.m. mysteriously for one night only vibes. Like imagine if this episode aired pre-internet as we 
know it, and this came on at 4 a.m. at one period while you were in bed. You would not be able to get anyone to believe that this actually happened. This looks like an internet rumor come to life, and it just so happens to be banned, not coming out on any DVD and not airing anytime soon. Of course, the health inspector locks them up again and drops them off where there is no people, aka the chum bucket. However, what they really should say is anywhere. There wasn't anyone else in this episode besides the hazmat suit guy in Plankton. So actually, if you wanted to drop them off where no one was, they were already where no one was. You actually dropped them off at the only place where we actually saw another aquatic life form. They really did Plankton dirty in this, and that's the other opinion I hold close. There are so many dynamics that I want to see and Plankton's involved in many of them. I get that he was the vehicle to show what happens if they simply left, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. Anywho, that's Quarantine Crab, let's finish up Fungus Among Us. So, finishing up Among Us, Squidward would not only refuse to serve the good people at the Krusty Krab, but violently shake his head, shaking the ick onto all the food. It makes you think twice about using those food delivery apps now, doesn't it? Mr. Krabs would also be quite competent in cooking. I guess it's Squidward behind the grill in which that's when everything Thing goes awry and he's the one who can't cook but I still think having them both not cook well would always be a nice way to remind us that it's actually Spongebob who makes the Krusty Krab run smoothly. If you take the ick out of the situation it just shows us that if they actually got a runner or someone who wanted to serve the food that the Krusty Krab would run well which kind of goes against the point of Spongebob being there. We'd see the gross aftermath having all of this now infected food be served to the masses. Eat up, kids. Also, isn't it great to see Squidward detected the ick on Spongebob's face, and also Old Man Jenkins' face, but not on the burgers? Is Squidward's eyes part face ID? How come he's able to see it sometimes, but not others? Also, as a person who has a significant other, the idea of me looking at them in the eyes as I eat a burger is grosser than the actual ick on the burger. Of course, Squidward is now fully infected, which leads into him revealing himself, for all now to focus their anger at him. In particular, there's a well-dressed fish with a self-admitted exotic accent who claims to be the health inspector, who calls the hygiene of this place inadequate. Quite the understatement, however, what I plan to focus on is that man is an imposter. The real health inspector is Andy Yellowtail, the one in Nasty Patty, and the one that would come back in Quarantine Crab. This man's a fraud. All he does is boycott the Krusty Krab. However, here's his plan. He turns his anger and control of the angry mob on Mr. Krabs, who then turns the angry mob onto Squidward, who then turns it onto SpongeBob, who recently arrived. SpongeBob looking incredibly gross, but in a good way, with pimples popping, needing that well-established pimple cream, as he said earlier, would be the only logical person here, despite infecting everyone. Here is the plan of the health inspector and everybody else. They plan to attack the sick person by popping the bubble. The bubble that started to leak ick. Because when I'm mad that someone infected me, I get into close physical contact with them even more, rather than going to a doctor. If this episode taught me anything, Bikini Bottom doesn't think about doctors all that much. For a place that has spots where you can instantaneously explode, and in other spots where hooks can drag you to the surface world, you would think that medical care would be respected. Throughout this chaos, Gary would A, exit his home rather easily, but then also B, be on the prowl for food that isn't organic. And that's where, because of all of the ick, it's like being in a buffet. Spongebob would reprimand Gary for consuming such a disgusting thing first, but given that he's a bottom feeder and given that Mr. Krabs gives him the okay, and given that it's his role within the ecosystem, and that he doesn't find it to be that bad, he just allows him. It's a nice way to wrap things up, while also again retaining that light nautical feel. It's not the full-on nautical feel that you would get in a lot of pre-movie Spongebob, but it's, it's fine. Of course, to round things out, Mr. Krabs makes money off the ick, even from the person that owns Gary. Now can I get you a Krabby Patty? In light of today's events, that notion is crass and offensive. I'll take two, please. This quote ages so well nowadays. Overall, it's a fine episode, if not for all of the plot convenient elements. 
Well, between the two, I actually like Quarantine Crab a lot more. Generally, with new and old SpongeBob, I lean towards the latter, but Quarantine Crab has clearer writing, better pair-ups, and I like that Health Inspector a lot better, even though he had his issues. But that's just my opinion. I hope both of these episodes air again sometime soon. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. But you know what? If they want to air it when we're all done with whatever's going on in the world, then more power to them. Until then, hopefully, thank you so much if you voted. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Alpha out.